What's up creators, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I post tutorials on video and photo editing. So if you like those type of things, consider hitting the subscribe button down here so you don't miss any of my posts. Okay, today's video is gonna be really quick guys. I'm trying to make these videos a lot more concise and just straight to the point rather than having a 25, 35 long video that's wasting all of our time. So it's gonna be five tips to break down and analyze any style. It's gonna be basically the basis on what I use to analyze the styles from the Edelag series. As you know, in the Edelag series, we try to break down the styles of famous photographers, movies, or filmmakers to replicate their color grading and therefore understand how to color grade in a better manner in post edition. Okay, so let's jump into it. Okay, so first tip before we jump into the color grading is understanding the genre that we're trying to replicate. So here we have Alan Pelander's style on Instagram. Immediately we can see that there's a lot of Lamborghinis, there's a lot of fashion, there's a lot of portraits and architecture photography. In general, this is called lifestyle photography. Now there's no point in trying to replicate this style or this look into my photos of my dogs in the backyard. It's not, it's not gonna be any relation between the example and the final result. So, Keep in mind the genre of the film, the genre of the photo that you're trying to emanate and try to take photos in similar situations or at least in the same genre. Next is gear. Now in gear, I'm not talking about cameras, I'm not talking about megapixels, I'm not talking about settings or anything like that. I'm talking about focal distances. Now we need to train the eye to understand with which lens each image or each video is shot with. So here, for example, we have this portrait. We can see how the legs of the model are basically extended or distorted. Also, the background is pushed away. And what this is telling me is that this is shot with a wide angle. Now, on the other hand, we can see that this photo is very cropped in, just focusing basically on the model. And this is telling me that this one is shot with a telephoto. Now, this is very important to understand how the photo was taken and how to replicate that look. Now, on another hand, talking about lenses, here we can see that these photos, we have the background completely blurred out and the subject very isolated. This is telling me that this is shot with a wide aperture, maybe a 1.4 or a 1.2. Now, wide apertures, as you know, allows a lot more light into the sensor, but also it makes our the plane of focus very small, therefore everything in the foreground and everything in the background is completely isolated or completely blurred out in other manners. On the other hand, for example, we have this portrait where the subject is very sharp, but also the background and the foreground are very sharp. And this is telling me that it is shot with a low aperture or a closed down aperture, maybe a 5.6 all the way down to f12. So we need to understand these factors in order to try to replicate the color grading into the correct types of photos. Okay, so now point number three is analyzing the contrast and the exposure of the images or the example style. So for that, we're just gonna open up the image that we want to break down and start analyzing exposure and contrast. For that, we're not gonna concentrate in colors at all. What we want to do is, for example, in the highlights, we're gonna check out the sky or any bright part of the image and see how much information there is. Let's say in the sky, we can see maybe the clouds in a very overcast state, that's telling us that in post edition, they're bringing down the highlights, so we have more information in those parts. Opposite to that, if the highlights or the sky was completely white and we don't have any detail there, that's telling us that the highlights, they're pushing them up and also the whites. And just like that, the shadows is the same thing. If we see a lot of information in the shadows, maybe in a black trouser or in the shadows of projected by a building, that's telling us that they're bringing up the shadows so they're trying to expand the dynamic range of the shadows so we have more information there. Opposite to that, if they're completely black and we don't see any detail there, they're bringing them down so we don't have all that information and we're achieving a lot more contrast. Now, the same thing applies when we're looking at the blacks. Now, if the blacks, for example, have a grayish tone, that's telling us that in post edition, what they're doing is bring up the blacks, whether it be in the tone curve or in the blacks, just bring them up so we don't have pure blacks and reducing a bit of the contrast on the image. So those things you just have to keep in mind when you're breaking down a style. Just first go with the exposure and then after that comes the color grading. Okay, so the fourth tip is the most emphatic of all is analyzing the color. Now, I have to divide this into two parts. The first part is analyzing if there's any tint added to the shadows and any tint added to the highlights. And that's very easy to look at, guys. Just center in a dark part of the image and see if it's black, if it's neutral, or if it has a color to it. 
Same thing applies in the highlights, just center your view in the bright part of the image and notice if there's any color to the whites. If there's any color to either of these parts, that's telling us that in split toning or color grading as it's now called, they're adding some tint into the shadows and into the highlights. And the second part in breaking down the color grading is just paying attention to details. So if you have a cap in the image and it's a bit orange and desaturated, and you know that the caps in New York, or let's say as an example, are more of a banana like yellow and they're very vivid, you know that in HSL they're changing the tonality or the hue of the yellow all the way to the oranges. The same thing applies when we're looking at the sky. If you see the sky a bit towards the greens, a bit towards the mints and aquas, that's telling us that in HSL they're changing the hue of the blues and the aquas more towards the negative. So just practice and just observe things that you know that the color is or how the color is in real life and then you have to apply that in each cell. So in essence, in this second part of color grading, what you have to do is just analyze the image, see if there's something that's a bit off, not the real colors that you know in real life that those objects are. It's a bit hard sometimes, but just due to general uh, knowledge on just experience on what the colors are in the scene, you know what to change in post edition. And the fifth and last tip that I have for you guys to understand and break down every single style that you encounter is observe, practice and repeat. Yes, it's very basic, but you have to do it, guys, in order for you guys to know and fine tune your eyes to understand the certain subtleties between a style and another and what they've changed and then practice how to achieve that in color grading so you dominate really your tools whether it be Lightroom, whether it be Capture One, whether it be Photoshop, you need to understand how to correlate what you see and how to apply it in your photo in post edition. Now for every video that I do in the Interlag series, I spent around two or three days breaking down the style, practice and repeat from what I observe, taking notes all the time until finally I fine tune the edit to what I think is the resemblance to the original style. So don't get desperate guys, if at the first try it doesn't quite come off on your edit, just take notes, observe again, see what you did wrong, see what you would change, and start fine tuning your edit. So it takes a lot of practice to breaking down the styles. Now, if you pay attention in my tutorials from the Edelag series, the first part of the video, which is the breaking down the style, I always go past these five tips to breaking down the style. I always go through what gear it is, always go through the type of photo or the genre, then I go over exposure, color, and then I practice. That's basically the basis of breaking down the styles. So that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you liked the video, can you please give it a like? It actually makes a difference. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.